right to the rocks. Then I make that shit back. Run up on me, get shot in the back. It's Jason, Booty Field VS Scott, Jam Man, Bang Bang. Pops are back on West because we love the West Coast, you heard? We love it, we love it. I'm addicted to the West Coast. <laughs> Fresno Bulldogs, California's biggest enemies. Oh, wow. wow. I know Fresno because Paul George went, I think he went to Fresno State. Or and I think they're called the Bulldogs. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fresno State Bulldogs. That's their name. But if it's your first time tuning in, subscribe to the channel. Request the content. Thank you for requesting this. And then we react. Yeah. So shout out to you, young man or young lady. Or he, he she, her, yeah. them. Fun fact about me, I'm a photogenic. So I can remember who goes to college where. Because I used to play 2K. And I used to play like, you know, like that uh, general manager or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I used to see people's colleges. But let me so ask you a question. Them. Yeah. Does anybody care? <laughs> care? Care? Uh, Does point. anybody care? <laughs> My fault. That was a random yap session, yeah. but let's hurry right to it, right? Yeah. To another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, we cover a random place that you've oh. never heard of. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow the Instagram no, page as well. So let's get into it. Fresno, California. Definitely one of the strangest places you can ever go to. <laughs> but in order for that to make sense, <laughs> let me set the context. California is really four separate states. First, you have the top of California, which consists of Humboldt County, Mendocino, and a bunch of random places. Okay. All of that is pretty much Southern Oregon anyways. <laughs> then you have Northern California, which is the Bay Area, yeah. Sacramento, and all the way up to Lake Tahoe. Okay. And of course you have Southern California, which includes LA and San Diego. But in between Northern and Southern <laughs> California, you have what's known as the Central Valley. Oh. It pretty much starts at Stockton and goes all the way down to Bakersfield. You might be thinking, okay, what's strange about- I know my geography guys, cause I know we did a Bakersfield person or something about that. And it's kind of the middle of California. Go check out our Stockton reaction. Work. We got many, many reactions to different things. So check it out, bro. That. So let me do my best to take you on a road trip from the Bay Area down to LA. As soon as you leave the Bay Area Circle, you end up in Modesto, California. Uh -huh. So you pull over to get gas, and here is what you see. Outside of the food mart is a tweaker on a stolen bike. He's covered in face tats, and he's holding a 150-pound pit bull. Then you look to your right, and right there is a fool with a red bandana, extra-large true religion shorts, and a pair of DC skate shoes. Instantly, you feel like you're in an alternate universe, and you want to escape as quickly as you can. Wow. So you stop pumping your gas right away, and you leave with a half tank. You head down Highway 99 and you end up in Merced, oh, California. Oh, oh. You think, oh. Nobody leaves with a half a tank when they yeah, go. you're bucket. You might as well fill it up. You're already there, bro. Fill it up. Yeah, fill it up. Or just, you know, get some. The fool, the fool in the true religion ain't messing with you. <laughs> It's a college town. Finally, I'm back in my comfort zone. So you pull up to another gas station and boom, right there is the same tatted up tweaker with his pit bull. Then you look over to your right and the guy with the red bandana is standing right there as well. At this point, you question everything you've ever thought about California. First of all, why is it 96 degrees in February? And second of all, why does it smell like cow poop outside? Oh, and lastly, what happened to the Teslas, BMWs, Whole Foods, and vegan restaurants? So you look at Google Maps and finally you see a big city coming up on the map. Fresno, California. You're back in regular civilization, right? No, because as soon as you enter the city, you see everything you saw in Modesto, except this place has 600,000 people. That's Yo, bigger than Oakland. Cali's big as shit. Like, people don't yeah. understand how many people are in California, bro. I didn't realize that to, like, the political um, debates when they, like, I looked up, like, the states and how big is California because it's a big yeah, state. Yeah, how many delegates they have. Yeah, so. they're yeah, huge, yeah. bro. It's pretty interesting. And uh, it's it's interesting for us being New Yorkers and, like, we're taking a deep dive into the, the California culture. And then when we we in the Cali culture, y'all got so much going on. Sacramento is so different from Oak Town, and Stock is different from Odessa, and Modessa, to San Diego. from San Diego, and from LA, oh my god, little puppet. On Modesto, except this place has 600,000 people. Half a That's bigger than Oakland, Sacramento, and Long Beach. Except that no one ever thinks about, talks about, or ever considers moving to Fresno. Wow. I know I've made fun of San Bernardino and Stockton plenty of times, but Fresno may have taken their spot. So congratulations to San Bernardino. You finally accomplished something in life. But anyways, the reason Fresno grew so large is because of its great agriculture. And the city's entire economy depends on the fertility of the land. In 
good rain years, Fresno's economy will be booming. But during the droughts, everything comes crashing down. And because of this, Fresno has always been a tough blue collar city. And when the economy is bad, many residents begin to make money in other ways. And we all know what this leads to, constant battles over markets and territory. And this is no exception with all kinds of rivalries throughout the city. Fresno is the real deal. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. Wait, it gets worse. That's only the intro? Yeah. Two, three, let's go. Subscribe to Javen TV. Subscribe to, subscribe to, subscribe to Javen TV. Subscribe to, subscribe to, subscribe. In order for this video to make sense, let's head all the way back to the start. 1968. Oh, this is the shit. year when the infamous North Tape started. You were already like 20 in 1968, right? So yeah, this could have been older, you. Older, man. Yeah, I grew up on the East Coast. I definitely would have been running with the boys. Right 67 there. years old. Yep. Yeah. Valley State Correctional really Facility. Real serious. During the early 1980s, Fresno slowly Yo, started thought, dis- I just realized how you guys mentioned in the last video that the reason that you don't hear about brown on brown crime is because they're identified as whites, like like especially Mexicans identified as whites as, as a race. Oh, they said that in the comments? Yes. So that's why you don't hear about like brown on brown crime and, and why people are not trying to stop it. Cause I don't know. I don't know because I don't know too much about that. That was just a quick question that we did have. I guess that's one explanation. I don't know how true that is. No, because no, I because I, I, I didn't know about this. I didn't realize well, how crazy. We were asking about the brown and brown crime. If anybody could just bring us up to speed about that, because we're extremely not knowledgeable about that. Extremely not knowledgeable. A correctional facility. During the early 1980s, Fresno slowly started disassociating from the Nortes. And it started as simple as this. They only started hanging out with each other. And then they started calling themselves by a different name, F-14, to represent Fresno first and then the 14, which represents Norte. Well, the top dogs were not pleased with Fresno distinguishing themselves. And they, after all, call all the shots. So they demand that Fresno stop referring to themselves as a separate group. Well, the Fresno guys did not care one bit and by 1982, a new rivalry was officially on. F-14 versus Nortes. However, all of this took place within the system. From Pelican Bay, Solano, Folsom, Soledad, and most importantly, Chowchilla. This rivalry was called the Red Wave, and it was just as bad as you can possibly imagine. Well, by 1986... So how did they get the word out in prisons? Because it was harder back then when people got phones. So how do you get the word out? Like, yo, we're going to rep this right now. So it just spreads throughout the... I guess yeah, no. Oh, that is true. People transfer prisons. So you can't really say That's like... That's a question. I really don't know. but Because we're not too prison friendly. Yeah, we're not prison birds. I guess people talk in the prison? Yeah, and it spreads. Word of mouth spreads quick. 14 had expanded outside the facilities and onto the streets of Fresno. But at this point, the rivalry with the North had gotten so bad that they wanted complete independence. No sure. So F-14 renamed themselves as the Bulldogs. Oh. This is because of Fresno State's football team. They definitely rushed this choice because Fresno Bulldogs does not sound intimidating one bit. Like, let's be honest. If somebody walks up to you and is like, yo, I'm a Fresno Bulldog, <laughs> you'll probably laugh in his face. Well, in reality, it's the other way around because these might be the most fearless dudes in California history. And trust me, you'll see why. The Bulldogs claim a lot of neighborhoods as their own, including Southside Fresno, Westside Fresno, Eastside Fresno, and everything east of I think it's only right we do a tour of all of these cities and go to your hood. Would you like to see that? Yeah, we're gonna go there live on stage. Please invite us if you wanna host us. Yeah, come on. Can we go to some of y'all hoods, bro? I wanna go and just like you know, see the vibes. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Including Southside Fresno, Westside Fresno, Eastside Fresno, and everything east of Highway 41. They also claim a bunch of small tweaker towns in Fresno <laughs> County as well. This includes Coalinga, San Joaquin, and Orange Cove. Well, early on, the Bulldogs had a major issue. They were all covered in tattoos of their rivals. Most importantly, they all had the number 14 on their body. Well, somehow a member realized that B is the second letter and D is the fourth. So members began turning the one into a two on their body. So if you ever see a guy with a funky looking 1-2 tattoo, chances are he's an original Bulldog. Oh, okay, wow. you might be thinking, if the Bulldogs like cover the vast that majority of Fresno, yeah. do they really run into problems? So let me break it down. Y'all don't got Arcade, y'all better get Arcade. Arcade has the best samples in the game. It's about... 
By 1986, the Bulldogs had a lot on their plate. Firstly from the Nortes, who mostly cover the downtown and West Fresno area. Then from the constant influx of essays coming up from Southern South California. Gang. And one thing about them is that they're not afraid to move right into your neighborhood. And for that reason, the Bulldogs always had to watch their back. And things would only get worse in 1990 when a new group of guys would migrate into Fresno. And that takes us down to Long Beach, where ABZ and Tiny Rascals began getting into a big rivalry. And because of this, many families moved out of Long Beach and up to Fresno, wow. which I understand because wanting of to leave Asian there. beef. Wow, Asian boys, I think they're called. Yeah, I feel like I heard them before. I think we did something. Bro. Yeah, we heard, yeah. Well, someone talked about them in the comments. Nobody talks about the Asian on Asian crime either, bro. Yeah, bro. Why races don't just team up and kill other races? Why are you guys killing your own race? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. thought you were serious for a second. <laughs> I was. Environment, but why Fresno of all places? Like, Fresno? Ew. Anyways, so hundreds of TRG began moving to Fresno, and of course, this caused like the bro. With the Bulldogs. The so TRG decided to join together with the Norte, and everything got messier. So between the Bulldogs, Norte, TRG, and Essays, hundreds and hundreds of events have taken Darn. place. However, I couldn't possibly cover every single event that has <laughs> taken place. So instead, I'm going to cover the most important events that have taken place. So let me introduce you to Jesse Aguilar, Jesse. also known as Big Paya. He is possibly the most infamous Bulldog of all time. He is a big old chunky dude and you do not want to get in his way. Big Paya is the head of the Bulldog set from the Kalwa neighborhood on the south side of Fresno. This is one of the most rundown and infamous neighborhoods in the whole city. Wow. Well, his right hand man is Angel Vasquez, also known as Lil Paya. And oddly enough, their main Main rivals are also Bulldogs, located on Bond Street on the east side. And it all started on August 19th, 2013. Angel Vasquez leaves his apartment on West Swift Avenue. That's when he notices a Bond Street Bulldog right outside. <clears throat> This incident devastated Big Paya because Lil Paya was really his best friend and right hand man. Well after asking around he finds out that it was ordered by a 58 year old named Fernando Zapata also known as Big Zap. So Big Paya waits on his opportunity. And that takes us New to Year's New Year's Eve, Eve 2013. Big Paya decides to attend a New Year's Eve party at a friend named Emilio's house. And in typical Bulldog fashion, he brings 10 to 15 members with him. Well, Paya ends up having a great time and stays the whole night throughout the morning. And that's when he gets the news that Fernando Zapata will be swinging by to make a purchase from Emilio. So Big Paya gets ready. 12.38 p.m. Fernando pulls up so, to Emilio. So, they had a mutual friend it looks like that set him up? Well, yeah, apparently, probably through conversation. He was there to pick up whatever from the host, Emilio, of the party, and he happened to be there. And he'd been, he been waiting on him. Damn. He'd been waiting to see him, actually. Emilio. So Big Paya gets ready. 12.38 p.m. Fernando pulls up to Emilio's game. With him is his son, Fernando Zapata Jr. They park the van and walk down the driveway. As soon as they get to the garage, right there is a sleepless Big Paya. Bang! After the incident, no one would speak up for two months. But that's when a family member of Zapata would speak up and say that it was Big Paya who did it. So in March of 2014, he would go down and eventually get life. However, this would only make him more powerful within the Bulldogs. From his Salinas Valley cell, he began orchestrating everything. But that wouldn't take place for a few years. In the meantime, subsets of Bulldogs began I don't taking sides so like, with You have to catch a body to be like... Important, I guess. The shot color? Nah, no, I mean, <laughs> it just, I don't really know how it works, but I'm assuming, yeah, you gotta put in work to that to answer your question. And also, it's just a ranking system, like yeah. where you fall, how old are you, how right? much respect you got, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like a job application to make Basically, work. Basically, yeah, you got a resume. <laughs> Not your traditional one, but it's a resume. At least for a few years. In the meantime, subsets of Bulldogs began taking sides with Big Paya's Kawa Bulldogs, one of which are the College Ave Bulldogs, who are one of the most notable in the city. They have a young rapper named Faith 300, and during his hood oh. vlogs, the comments are filled with people calling them imposters, phony, and living in a nice neighborhood. And honestly, from a visual perspective, they're not wrong, but in reality, it's far from the truth. And you'll see why later in the video. But in the meantime, we head to a different part of Fresno. We drive up Highway 41 and head to the Pinedale neighborhood. 
this is where the Northside Bulldogs are known to hang out. Well, in 2014, a new group began to form in the Northside area, a group of guys from a country called Laos. This is a small country located in between Vietnam and Thailand, and back in the day, it was known for some of the toughest men on the planet. Well, the Northside Bulldogs wow, did not Laos. like them moving. I feel like I heard of that country before, Laos. Yeah, that's when we did the when we did the other the Asian the blood Asian blood. He's from La one of the guys from Laos. I think right? so. Yeah, yeah. Vietnam and Thailand. So okay, that's interesting. That's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah into their area and this caused an instant rivalry. So a Pinedale Bulldog named Jeremy Chacon decided to do some research into where exactly they live. And once he found three of their houses, he decided to go no on a mission. July 6, 2015, Jeremy drives to 60 West Beachwood Avenue, bam. Then he drives to 300 West Pinedale, oh, nice. bam. And finally he heads to 300 West Fur Drive, bam. Chacon was sending a message to the Laos Bloods, but two days later it would cost him. His license plates were tracked from surveillance footage. While the Laos men did not leave Fresno. Criminals are the dumbest people. Pops always says it. They always do the dumbest shit. Why you don't cover your license plates as you're driving? You a stolen car or carjack somebody and then do a rental. Something. Steal somebody plate and then cover your We're not gonna give you advice on how to do crime. That's what happened with Young Thug situation too. Like something a rental that it was under his name or some shit. Someone did a yeah, corner body. They just said Young Thug about to get out. Allegedly, right? They said Allegedly. Yeah. License plates were tracked from surveillance footage. Well, the Laos men did not leave Fresno. Instead, they got ready for action. Specifically, a man named Kamprasong Tamavong. And I mean, look at the guy. Wow. How much do you want to bet that he doesn't own a single Gucci item, nor has he been to a Gucci store? Well, let me chill out, because I don't want any problems yeah. with this guy. On March 7th, 2016, he was pulled over and arrested for having all kinds of things you can legally have in 48 <laughs> states. But definitely not California, so he received a large sentence. And to this day, the Laos and Bulldog rivalry is still going on. But for now, let's head back down to the south side of Fresno. Over the next few years, the Bond Street versus Kawa rivalry got even worse. But all of this was being orchestrated from within the facility, specifically Big Paya. And that takes us to July 9th, 2021. Wow. A group of Kawa and College Ave Bulldogs get together and look for a 52-year-old named Javier Fernandez. Wow. They drive down to his address in the Malaga neighborhood. And there he is sitting outside his home. Bang. After this incident, Fresno police began wiretapping the Bulldogs and getting all of their evidence Crazy. together. And on October 7th, 2021, they announced the Kawa sweep. 14 Bulldogs were officially oh, arrested, shit. one of which was Big Paya, who they say orchestrated the event on July arrested. 9th. So now he's looking at another 85 years. But he don't give a few fuck. Call he already got life. Yeah, he don't care. So he's a killer everybody. Yo, Frey 300, I feel like y'all told us to do him, right? I've seen his name, bro. I'm photogenic, like I said at the beginning of the video. I believe so. Yeah. So is he tough? What are those accounts? It's on July 9th. So now he's looking at another 85 years. And a few college app members who were seen in the Fate 300 vlog went down as well. One specifically is his brother, Romeo oh, sure. Tobias. Another one is seen in the vlog as well. So all that talk about imposters, leave it alone because these guys were not lying about anything. And for those of you who think Fresno was a joke, think twice because this is only half of what's going on. Another giant sweep happened on oh, April wow. 15th, but it's involving a whole different set of rivalries. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Swamp Stories. Make they sure to mention like the black homies of the world. So like, oh, what the black homies doing for Fresno? And also, he should have mentioned the college. Like, how big is Fresno State? Is that like a? Is yeah, that he kind of like went over it real quick. He didn't go into detail. Is that a college town? Most likely, most likely, right? Probably. Is Jerry TV for the show? We out of here. Peace. And I know how it gets, so I got still on. I'm on my knot. I don't trust no nigga. I don't trust no man. Ain't no friends. Everybody get shot. You never know how nigga gonna throw. I'm hitting the flow with a couple of shots. You better move. You better duck either way to go.